Now, let us study some of the antenna parameters. So, we have 10 antenna parameters. One is the radiation pattern. Another one is radiation intensity. Another one is directive gain or the directivity. Another one is power gain. And antenna beam width. Then antenna input impedance. Antenna bandwidth. Effective length. And effective aperture. And antenna polarizations. So these are so the 10 parameters. So we will study so these 10 parameters one by one. Now, so let us study power density. Power density are the pointing vector. Power density are the pointing vector is represented by P. Power density is also called as pointing vector represented by P. It is nothing but the power flow per unit area. And area is normally perpendicular to the direction of propagation. That is, so this is the direction of uh, propagation. And so this is the area normal to the power flow. Now, if E and H are the electrical and the magnetic field components, E is the electrical field component and H is the magnetic field component. So then, so the pointing vector is given by P is equal to E cross H. Therefore, you can write P is equal to modulus value of E and H sin theta. And sin theta is equal to 90 degree. So then, we can write this particular equation as E to H. The relation between E and H is E divided by H equal to eta. This is equal to root of mu divided by epsilon, where mu is the permeability and epsilon is the permittivity. And this eta is called as intrinsic impedance. Then now, for free space propagation is considered, E by H equal to, so this mu by epsilon, we will write it as mu 0 divided by epsilon 0 because of the free space and that value is equal to 120 pi. Or you can read that intrinsic impedance of the free space is 120 pi. If you substitute the values of pi here, so then it becomes 377 ohms. Now, substitute the equation number 2 in the equation number 1. Then P equal to E into H. Now here, H from this particular equation, substitute so the values of H, then it becomes E square divided 120 pi or H square into 120 pi. That is, P you can express in terms of electrical field component and P you can express in terms of magnetic field component. That is, pointing vector you can represent in the electrical field component or in terms of the magnetic field component. We will call it as equation number 3. Then, the average value or the RMS value of the power density is calculated from the equation P RMS is equal to 1 by 2 E into H. Now, so what this is indicating, overall concept what it is indicating that. So, this is the uh, sphere of this particular uh, antenna. So, how much amount from this particular antenna, so through this particular area, how much amount of the power is flowing? from this particular antenna, through this particular area, how much amount of the power is flowing, so that is nothing, nothing but the power density.
So let us consider the power theorem. So the power theorem says that the total power radiated from an antenna element is represented by W. W is equal to a sub surface integral of the power radiated into a ds, a small area. Here, so whatever the ds is there, so ds is a small area and p is your pointing vector or the power density. So in order to understand this, let us consider this particular diagram. So this is x, y and z. Okay, here we have the three components. So whatever your power uh, is radiated from the antenna, so it is in the vertical direction and it is also in the horizontal directions. Now, so the vertical component is represented by theta and the horizontal component is represented by phi and the radius, that is the antenna region is represented by r. So that is, so at any uh, point in the space, so the power radiated from the antenna is the function of three component r, theta and the pi. R is the radius, theta is the vertical component and phi is the horizontal component. And the vectors corresponding to this r, theta and phi as represented here, a theta, okay, a r and a phi. So a theta is the uh, vector corresponding to theta, a r is the vector corresponding to uh, the r and a phi is a vector corresponding to the phi. Now, here a small area ds have been shown. So the same diagram, so once again represent it here. So as usual, z axis, y axis and x axis. And here you have the theta component and here you have the pi component. Now here we are considering a small area ds. So this is a small area through which how much amount of the power is flowing we are calculating. And for this particular purposes, for the theta component is considered in the vertical directions, you write it as r into d theta. For the horizontal component is considered, that is phi. So we have r sin theta and r sin theta into d phi. Now for this, consider an elemental area ds. So this is our small elemental area ds subtended by d theta and d phi. So this particular small area is subtended by an angle that is d theta and d phi. A small area, okay, consider an elemental area ds subtended by d theta and d phi. Now approximately, so whatever the area you are having here, so this is equal to r d theta into r sin theta into d phi. So this you can write it as r square sin theta d theta and d phi, call it as equation number 6. Now substitute the equation number 5 in equation number 6. If you substitute equation number 5 in equation number 6, then w is equal to 0 to 2 pi and 0 to pi because here the double integration is there p r square sin theta d theta d phi and this we are considering it for the full sphere or so this power total power unit to 0 to 2 pi and 0 to pi by 2 p r square sin theta d theta d phi you are considering it for the half sphere that is the total power radiated you can calculate it for the full sphere using this equation and you can calculate it for the half sphere using so this equation.
Now, let us consider another parameter that is radiation intensity. The radiation intensity is the power flowing through a solid angle considering normal to the direction of flow. That is the power flowing through a unit solid angle normal to the direction of flow is called as radiation int intensity and it is represented by u. And the elemental solid angle d omega in polar coordinate is calculated from the equation d omega equal to ds divided by r square and already wrote that the values of ds is equal to r square sin theta d theta d phi u. If you substitute it in this, then r square and r square will get cancelled. We will left with sin theta, d theta and d phi u. And so far, whatever things has been explained in this, shown in this diagram. So this is the antenna. This antenna radiates the energy signals. And the radiation of this one is in the antenna region. So that is a sphere of radius r. And this radius is equal to r. Within this, you are having the antenna radiations. And so here what the circle has been shown, this is a unit solid angle and we want to calculate through this particular unit solid angle how much amount of the power is flowing so that is nothing but the radiation intensity. Now, so this W is equal to surface integral u into d omega and this you can calculate it for the full sphere and also you can calculate it for the half spheres. And for the full sphere, W is equal to 0 to 2 pi and 0 to pi, u sin, uh, sin theta, d theta and d phi u. And for the half sphere, so this is W equal to 0 to 2 pi and 0 to pi by 2, u sin theta, d theta and d phi u. And this is it for the half sphere. The above relations. R power theorem in terms of radiation intensity.
So let us consider the isotropic antenna. So the isotropic antenna is an hypothetical antenna or the fictitious antenna. And this antenna is practically not existing, but in order to understand the concept of or the functioning of all other antennas, we are considering the isotropic antennas. And all other antennas are referred with respect to the isotropic antennas. Now this is one isotropic antenna which radiates a power and the sphere is represented as a dotted lines and now here is a pointing vector p and radius intensity u and isotropic radiator is the one which radiates uniformly in all the directions now so the power radiated from this particular antenna that is the power radiated from this isotropic radiator or the isotropic antenna sometimes it is also called as isotropic radiator. The total power radiated W equal to a surface integral P0 into ds, where ds is a small elemental area. And this is equal to P0 into 4 pi r square. So let us call it as equation number 11. And this equation number 11, you can write it as P0 is equal to W divided by 4 pi r square. You will call it as equation number 12. Now, in this, what is the W is there? W refers to the radiated power or the input power. When you are using it as a transmitting antenna, so then you are calling it as a radiated power. And whenever you are using it as a receiving antenna, so then you are calling it as input power. And also, this W can be calculated from a surface integral U0 into d omega. U0 is a constant term, we'll take it outside, then surface integral of d omega. And the surface integral of this d omega is going to give us the value as 4 pi. Therefore, you can write it as u0 is equal to w divided by 4 pi, we'll call it as equation number 13. And this is how, so this isotropic uh, antenna radiates the power. Now, let us see the inverse square law. Now, in order to study this inverse square law, we, we need to consider the wavefront. Here, wavefront A and the wavefront B have been shown. What is this particular wavefront? The wavefront is a surface of constant phase and the phase angle of a field at a distance r. Now, here, so we are considering the phase angle at a distance r1 for this wavefront and here we are considering the phase angle at a distance r2. So this is equal to 2 pi by lambda into r. So this 2 pi by lambda, we are calling it as a beta, then it is going to be beta into r. Now, so here, for understanding purposes, we are considering only two wavefronts. One wavefront is A, and the other wavefront is B. And this wavefront is at a distance of r1 from the antenna, and this is your antenna position, and this wavefront is a distance of r2 from this antenna. Now, here P A is written and P A is written. If P A and P B are the power densities along the wavefront A and B, that is P A is the power density along the wavefront A and P B is the power density along the wavefront B, then P A can be calculated as P T divided by 4 pi R A square and P B is equal to P T divided by 4 pi into R B square. Then, so this equation, if I write it as P A divided by P B, so then the PT and PT will get cancelled and 4 pi and 4 pi will get cancelled. Finally, we are left with RB divided by RE. What this is indicating that, so whatever is power density is there, power density is inversely proportional to the distance referred to as inverse square law. If you observe this equation, power density, is, that is PA is in, inversely proportional to RE and PB is inversely proportional to the RB. That is, power density is inversely proportional to the distance what you are referring. And this is we are calling it as a inverse square law.
Now, so let us consider the radiation pattern. So this is the radiation pattern of an antenna. Whenever antenna radiates the energy in the form of electromagnetic waves, so this type of the patterns you will get. And at this particular place you have the antenna. And this what you are getting it here, the main loop. So this is the area where your antenna is radiating the signal signals. And so and apart from this particular main loop, we are having so the other loop at the back of uh, this antenna and are at the side of the antennas. The lobes we are getting at the back of the antenna is called as a back lobes and lobes which are there at the side of the antenna are called as a side lobes. So that means to say that if this is the antenna, so this is the direction where your antenna is radiating the powers. So this is the one where your antenna is radiating the power. And Whenever it is radiating the signals in this particular direction, some radiation will be there at the back side. So this you are calling it as a back loop and this you are calling it as a main loop and this you are calling it as a back loop. Similar to this, some amount of the radiation will be there at the side. So like this here and so like this here. So this is what we are calling it as a side loops. So the E phi is the electrical field component in the horizontal plane and E theta is the electrical field component in the vertical plane. Now, so for the, this, uh, when this antenna radiates, okay, now here we will come across the two types of the patterns. One is a normalized field pattern, another one is a normalized power patterns. So the normalized field pattern is given by E phi of theta phi of this n indicates the normalization E theta of theta comma phi divided by E theta theta comma phi of maximum that is of the field radiate to the maximum field is known as a normalized field pattern. So I am repeating once again the ratio of field radiated to the maximum field radiated is known as a normalized field patterns and normalized power pattern is the ratio of power radiated to the maximum of power rated is called as a normalized power rate, uh, power pattern and it is given by Pn of theta comma phi where so this S of theta comma phi is there it is the pointing vector and it is given by E theta square of theta comma phi plus E phi square theta comma phi divided by Z0 and this is uh, giving you the field pattern in the theta directions and this is the field pattern you are getting in the phi direction that means so this is the component you are getting in the vertical uh, direction and this is the component you are getting in the horizontal directions. The field component in the vertical direction plus the field component in the horizontal direction divided by the impedance is going to give you the pointing vectors so that is S of theta comma phi and S of theta comma phi is the maximum value of S of theta so that is this S of theta comma phi maximum is nothing but it is the maximum values of this S theta comma phi where so this Z0 is the intrinsic impedance. And to say that whenever an antenna radiates a pattern it contains a main loop, back loop, side loops and field component in the vertical direction and the field component in the horizontal directions. Then whatever the field patterns are there you can normalize it. So then it are called together normalized field patterns and whatever the power is there, you can normalize it, then you can get the normalized power pattern.